All right guys, what's going on? Vic here from beautiful Panama City, Florida. I wanted to do something special and just do a real good clean and cook video for you guys where we're gonna clean the fish and I'm gonna give you a really easy and tasty fish recipe you guys can try at home as well as give you some tips along the way. This is a gorgeous red grouper, an absolute stud. And we caught a bunch of big red grouper with our good friend Josh from Heritage Excursions. We got Brick's whole family. We're staying at this real nice house and just having a great time eating fresh fish for dinner every single night. Right here behind the head, around the peck fin, over the rib cage, and down here. So grouper have a lot of head meat right here. I like to take my knife and now I like to go from the head all the way down to the tail. And grouper is one of those fish that's good to eat in whole as well as well as snapper, but a grouper this size, I like to fillet out, just because it's too hard to work with whole. Now we get our knife on that fish's spine. And just separate that gorgeous white Gulf of Mexico red grouper meat. And if you guys have never had a grouper before, it's a very flaky yet firm fish. It's got super big flakes. It's actually my favorite fish to fry, which is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a real good double breaded or double battered, double dredged um, flour batter. Okay, so the trickiest thing with the grouper is breaking through these pin bones right here and getting over that rib cage. Once you get over that rib cage, point your knife down, get on the other side of the backbone. And I really try not to tear this meat. You don't ever wanna really fold it on itself. You wanna make sure it's always in the same kind of position. So use one hand to really hold it and don't let it fold upon itself because it's just gonna make your filet not as nice. And like that, beautiful, look at that. I mean, it's just screaming, eat me. And here's something interesting. So many people have seen us on the channel eat things like amberjack and sea trout and people are so terrified of worms. Grouper is a fish that's in almost every single prominent seafood restaurant. Five-star seafood restaurants, grouper's always on the menu. Look at this. This grouper has worms in it. I promise you, if you've ever been to a really good restaurant, you've probably eaten worms and never even known about it. These worms are not harmful to humans. Once you cook them, they cook out. You don't even see them really. So don't be afraid. It's not just the trash fish like amberjacks that have worms. Even good fish like grouper have them too. I know a lot of you guys comment below and say, hey man, why didn't you eat the whole fish? Why didn't you take the cheeks? Why didn't you take the throat? A lot of times we do eat the head, we do eat the carcass, we make fish stocks out of it. We try not to be wasteful and I don't wanna be a voice for bad practice, but look in the water right there. When you guys throw things in the water at a fillet table, at a marina, at a river, you're feeding crabs, you're feeding bait, you're feeding stingrays that come by, sometimes manatees come by, sharks, nothing really goes to waste. If you're throwing it in a garbage can, that's a different story, but as long as you're putting it back into the system, into the saltwater system, look at all these pinfish you're feeding. Those pinfish are eventually gonna be food for predators like sea trout and snook and redfish, so I like to view it in a positive way that everything comes full circle. So here's the grouper all filleted out, and like I said, I know you can eat the whole fish, not trying to be wasteful, but you guys see, there's a living ecosystem here. There's blue crabs, there's pinfish, there's trout, stingrays, there's sharks in here, there's dolphin. This thing is not going to waste. Another thing you guys comment a lot about is the fact that take a lot of fish, or we harvest a lot of fish on a trip. Well, we drove nine hours to come here on a family vacation. Josh runs 55 miles to get offshore there. You're not just feeding Brick and I's family, you're feeding Josh's family, he's got friends. You know, it's expensive to go out there, so you gotta kinda, you know, you gotta make it worth it. And that's why we do keep a lot of fish. We're gonna freeze some of this, and this brings me to my next point. We usually eat a lot of fresh fish, 
But when we do freeze it, the number one thing, if I could get everybody to do, is to remove the bloodline. I promise you, certain fish are better than others frozen, but if you remove this right here, this bloodline, this red stuff, you are going to preserve the shelf life of your fish so much better, and you're gonna enjoy it so much more. If you're gonna eat this fresh, you don't have to remove this. If you're very picky and you don't like that oily fishy taste, remove it anyway. But this fresh is great. This, when you freeze it and it sits in your freezer for three months, two weeks, three weeks, it turns brown. It's not gonna be good and that spreads to the other parts of your meat. So I would get rid of it. We're saving it for crab trap bait. I'm just trying to share all my knowledge and things I've picked up along the years since we do this almost every single day. This is a red grouper. This is a scamp grouper I just filleted. I didn't remove the bloodline at all because scamp grouper, the nature of this fish is that it doesn't have a very big bloodline. This fish freezes well. When you hear people say that some fish freeze well and some don't, oilier, the bloodier the fish, the bigger the bloodline, the less likely you're gonna wanna freeze it. It's not gonna be good. Something like a scamp grouper, I didn't have to trim this at all. This red grouper I'm gonna freeze because I wanna save some for my dad. I'm gonna go ahead and remove anything red that I see. So we're on the quest to make the perfect fried fish sandwich. And that starts with the perfect piece of fish. So there is the grouper that we just filleted outside. And when you're making something like a sandwich, you gotta take everything into account. These are beautiful brioche buns, super buttery, got a great flavor, soft, and we're gonna crisp them up on the grill as well. And then you gotta think about everything. You gotta think about the final product when you're making your sandwich. That starts with the perfect size piece of fish. We'll go about like a six ounce, nice healthy portion. Look at that. Grouper is probably one of my favorite fish to fry. Big, flakes, firm. So we're just gonna go ahead and trim this up, remove any bloodline. If there's any scales or anything left on there, pat it dry with some paper towels. So for this batter, we're going super southern. This is our grouper, just soaking in buttermilk. Buttermilk gives it a good fatty flavor, a good acidic flavor. And yeah, so it's just been soaking in there for about 20, 30 minutes. Here we got all-purpose flour that we're gonna season real quick. Good amount of garlic powder, some paprika, and onion powder. Onion powder is nice and sweet. You gotta salt every step of the way, and some black pepper. So straight from the buttermilk into our seasoned flour. And we're gonna do this twice. You ever wonder how KFC, Chick-fil-A, Popeyes gets that really good crust? That good breading, they do a double, sometimes even triple dredge. You used to work there? I didn't, but I did my research. So our buttermilk is the binding agent, but you could use milk. You could use all different types of things. But you gotta use something to get that flour to stick well. So we got our fish double dredged. Literally just repeated what we did. Set them on a sheet pan after they hit the buttermilk the flour batter, back into the buttermilk, back into the flour batter, and you're just basically doubling your batter. You're gonna get it super crispy. Now we got a nice cast iron skillet, nice and hot. Straight into the, into the oil, into peanut oil. So we're gonna do a little cucumber, red onion, Fresno chili slaw. I have our red onions and Fresno chilies just soaking in some water, macerating. Just gonna get rid of that super pungent, real sharp taste of that red onion, as well as that red chili is gonna get a little bit less spicy and soften up as well. And you can do that in vinegar, but we're going to make a vinegar based slaw. So I didn't wanna waste the vinegar, I just soaked them in water for now some julienne English cucumber. We're gonna toss this in a little apple cider vinegar. It's gonna be the acid of our choice. Whenever you're frying fish or making something super savory or fatty, you can cut it with an acid. Acid's gonna freshen it up and it really complements that fatty flavor. So apple cider vinegar, 
lime juice, white vinegar, red wine vinegar. There's just so, orange juice, anything. Anything acidic is gonna really complement that. And then some sugar. So I'm just gonna use dark brown sugar. I really like the flavor of it. As well as some honey. And then we're just gonna mix this up and this is gonna go on top of our fried fish sandwich. We're also doing a little Cajun mayo. But this is just gonna keep it real fresh. You know, you're eating fried fish and it's covered in bread and you just wanna brighten it up a little bit. Look at the beautiful color on this fish. Look at that. Here we got equal parts sour cream and mayo. I don't like to do straight mayo. I think using some sour cream kind of freshens it up a little bit and it gives it some texture. So we just went in with some garlic powder, paprika, onion powder, all to eyeball. And we'll do black pepper. And check this out. Oh yeah, that's the color we're looking for. Drain a little bit of the oil. And ideally you'd want to put this on a wire rack because when you don't have any airflow on the bottom of your fried foods, the bottom is going to get soggy, which you don't want with fried food. But we're on vacation, we're in a different spot and we don't have a wire rack with us, so you got to make do with what you got. Paper towels, your next best friend. So just to give our buns a little flavor, I'm going to toast them a little bit on this griddle. These are nice buttery brioche buns. Here's our little Cajun aioli. I'm going to go down on the bottom bun. I'm going to try to keep doing more of these clean and cook videos for you guys. And if you enjoy them, you want to see more of them, comment below. Comment below any ideas you guys might have. You know I like cooking, and like the video if you haven't liked it already, because it's going to help the YouTube channel grow and help these videos grow. Big old piece of grouper. I should have gone a little bit smaller with our pieces, but this is actually from a huge grouper, so... Look at this lucky person. Look at all that fish. You're never going to get that in a restaurant. We got our little slaw. go there's the finished product you got your aioli on both sides of the toasted bun your little slaw fried fish We're good Wait, is that mine? holy <laughs> grouper sandwich look at that thing. I'm not getting that in a restaurant I'll tell you that. oh my gosh that is one fat piece of grouper fish oh I can hear that crunch from here Fisher mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Man. That's a lot more fish than bread in this sandwich. Super tender. Melts in your mouth. You got that crisp of the fish, like the perfect crisp that you would want on fried fish. A little bit of a toasted bun, the perfect bun choice. Good job, Meg. With the slaw, really, really good fried fish sandwich. If you had a food truck with these, you'd kill it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That'd be a good food truck choice, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Mom? Liking it? Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Loving it. It'd be almost impossible to get a thick grouper like that on a continuous basis though, wouldn't it? That was your grouper. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that was a big piece of fish. I couldn't get tired of eating these. I'll tell you that. You guys heard it, the verdict is out. I highly suggest, I haven't even tried one. There's still five more pieces of fish on the cast iron, but I highly suggest it. You know, it's a cool way to spice up your fish sandwich. Um, that simple cucumber, red onion, red chili slaw. None of us around here are like super spicy people. And I put two whole red chilies in there. When you macerate it like that, it really takes out the heat. You guys didn't think it was spicy, right? No. 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 Very nice. good. Yeah. 
And that's something I learned from uh, my buddy Ames. You know, that Fresno chili, you leave it soaking in water or vinegar, it just gives you a super nice, fresh flavor. I gotta stop this. Look at, look at the steam. <laughs> look at the steam coming off of that. Oh yeah. How did you cook such a fat piece of grouper through and through like that? I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's it's cooked it's cooked evenly, even though it's super thick. You gotta have the eyeballs of a of a chef. A wannabe chef at least. So I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I'm not gonna I mean I'm gonna try it, but I'm not gonna try it on video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's different. Definitely wanna start doing more of them, you know. We go on so many trips where we catch a lot of fish and instead of just doing a catch clean cook. You just take a separate fish, clean it for you guys, cook it, give you guys a different recipe idea. But I need your feedback. Comment below if you guys want to see more. Like the video if you haven't already. And we got fish sandwiches to eat, so I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.